Hey guys, it's your girl Avalon. Aren't you happy I'm back? I knew you missed me. I got my nails done. Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cardia. And I am Avalon Cardia. And this here is Frank, the man, the myth, the legend. As you can see, we're without our co-host today, unfortunately. But she is in the hospital with her husband, who is doing just fine. But prayers are always appreciated. Appreciated. You can pray for anything. And, yeah. You, 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 you. When someone is healthy, you can pray for their health. Of course. When someone is sick, you can pray on their downfall. Oh. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's all pos. It's all positive around here on this Christian podcast. But in lieu of her being gone, Frank took the responsibility upon himself to put on five hats. If you guys watch the previous podcast, for every podcast in Lent, my co-host adds a hat to her head. Well, lucky for her, she doesn't have to do a balancing act because Frank is doing it for her. Anywho, moving on, let's get into the good stuff. Who are you? You've been in a few podcasts. I've been, I think I've been in two. Fan you, favorite, I would say. Do you remember the last podcast you were in was? We were in Florida. Were we? Or yeah. was it the rainbow one? No. You or were, was it the Mickey one? You were one? in three. You I were, was in. You I was were in, in more. two with me, and one by yourself. Was I was Rainbows, Mickey? Florida was the girls' podcast. Basketball. That was four. the first one. Oh, Rainbow Mickey basketball Florida. A little bit too much. So you've seen her around. You know what, what she's can about. I say um, anything new? You started a new job. I started a new job. Where this, at? It was my. I don't know what day. Just started the Lash Lounge. Um, so if you want to get your lashes done, I'll be at the front desk signing now, you in. Now, now this isn't like full lashes being put on. This is like one by one. This is professional lashes. This is professional lash extensions. Okay. Lash lifts are also done. It's like a perm for your eyelashes. Okay. Tints, brow tints, brow threading. Do they do, I, I learned this on TikTok, do they do the tattooing or does that only in tattoo shops? I heard the boss mention microblading, microblading. which is, yeah. Yeah. But I haven't seen it on the like pricing thing. Okay. So I don't know if it's like, if you want it, it might be able to be done because they're certified so, stylists. Correct me if I'm wrong. Microblading is when you have thin eyebrows and they almost tattoo. Yeah. It's texture, literally like, like cutting. Like a, oh. Well, I mean like, it's not, I. it's probably just tattooing, but it's not like a tattoo gun. I'm pretty sure. Oh. It's like, cause it's like these, it's more, when I've seen the close up videos, it's like, a bunch of little rods and then the dye is going in so it's similar to tattooing but you, you could probably also tattoo your eyebrows which would be a different process uh so whatever it is it probably looks more natural yeah. than having lines tattooed yeah like when you but mark your eyebrows on there's brow tinting which is also if you have like light eyebrows it's just and, dying your yeah eyebrows? but it's like i think they can like even like you know adjust the shape a little bit help now, it out. asking for a friend when someone <laughs> is dyeing their hair bleach blonde Per se, yeah. Per se. Are they meant to dye their eyebrows bleach blonde or does that look unnatural? I think it depends on how bleached. Mm. I think it depends on the look you're going for because eyebrows are normally darker than your natural hair color. So if you're going super light, you might want to lighten your eyebrows, but you wouldn't want to do the same exact dye, I don't okay. think. Okay. Because like, like my hair is like dark brown, but my eyebrows are black. Mm. You know? No, I do not know. Also, a secret I haven't told anybody. I just, well, because I just got off work. I set up an eyelash appointment. I've never gotten my lashes done. I get it for free because I'm a worker. So, and they said I have good lashes to work with. Do you want to see them? Can you see them? So you want them longer? Well, it's like volumizing. So like, you know when a girl wears mascara and it's like darker? I do. <laughs> and like i've seen it or a boy or a non-binary um or frank or frank he no, doesn't have this. eyelashes <gasps> we should put lashes oh. on him uh, can he set up an appointment can you make a call he might need strip lashes because he has no lashes to work with strip lashes whatever he he loves to strip and he loves lashes so okay strip lashes for old frankie boy Anyhow, guys, beautiful day today. We're we're almost getting to spring. We're on our we're on our way. Yeah. Wait. Okay. You'll just put the picture in of my nails because they're like spring ass colors. Okay. But you, this was your first winter in, in many a years. Yes. You're coming back from Florida. It's it's been rough, guys. Um, 
I don't know what to say. I Do you know there's going to be a storm tomorrow? I do. I'm going to the Aaron Express, which is a Philadelphia staple. St. Paddy's Day, you ride around to all the old Irish pubs, just like our granddaddies used to do. Um, one little caveat, it's going to suck because today was beautiful 60 degree beautiful. weather dance and enjoy tomorrow it's going to drop like it's hot except it's not hot drop it's cold. like it's cold and it is going to be sn- at sleet rain at, at two at two p.m which is probably like the height of this it's like a, a during the day thing yeah it says snowstorm but you know maybe maybe it will create some camaraderie i think the greatest camaraderie is when things are going bad because then it's like, we're all in it's this like together. It's like you're bonding. All in this together. I had to leave the Penn, a Penn State football game early because I was so cold. Yeah, it gets cold over there in the old uh, Happy Valley. Yeah. Not so happy when it's cold. Chilly Valley, I like to call it. It is March 11th. You know what my that means? My favorite, one of, the, uh, of my 12 favorite days of the year. Actually, it's getting down to it. This is now top three. I love 11th. Countdown to May 11th, my birthday. And so then... June 11th is my 12th favorite 11th. July 11th is my 11th. So this is my third favorite day of the year. I'm stoked. um, I don't like 14s that much, but I work with it. But the 11th, do you know what it is? Uh, This is a holiday podcast. So um, you got any holidays for us? National Oatmeal Nut Waffles Day. Usually we we sift through all the uh, bad holidays. There's really, um, if you wanted me to say National Funeral... Funeral Director and Mortician Recognition Day? I think they deserve a lot of recognition. Okay. They, like, imagine you're dealing with people. This is a Christian podcast, and so we talk about death a lot. I liked the oatmeal nut waffles. And you know what? But I didn't. That's why I wanted to say I think I'm allergic. Okay. Okay. We talk about death a lot here on this Christian podcast. And one of the tough things that we need to sort of overcome in, in Christianity is trying like balancing grieving with faith yeah and that then that the person is gone but their soul is still there and i've and, uh funeral directors and morticians they bring such a um comfort to the family where they do a lot of the i'm sure the actual work is quite dirty but yeah to make like for wakes and stuff uh, a beautiful person one last time to say yeah. goodbye well, since we do a little still hang on to that earthly remembrance of the body but and also like for someone to do the job like i don't think they get enough recognition because you don't really want to talk about you don't funerals and stuff and but the fact that they like it must take a toll on them in some aspect they, they to de- deal yeah, with that they all they definitely the time. do a lot for the grieving process but they do deserve to be appreciated because they deal with a sad job i don't want to say depressing but they deal with a, a job that involves death which is never yeah. not easy to talk about let alone work with as your nine to five so shout out them good holiday but also so i don't think i'm allergic to well it says oatmeal nut is that a type of nut i don't know i think i might be allergic to cashews i don't really care but it's a the, bit tragic. you're allergic to the old tree nuts yeah possibly it's a mystery i had to take a benadryl the other day no oh, were you feeling a little wacky yeah, I yeah, I was in the hospital. <laughs> Yo, you, but they sent me home. <laughs> they said you're not that bad. I overdosed some Benadryl. How many did you take? I took, I took one a, baby. I took one. one Benadryl, but then they gave me a steroid when I went in because I was like, it's feeling a bit. Yeah, I don't remember the last time I took Benadryl. Um, any is there any more holidays or shall we move? Well, on? no. There's one more I wanted to say. Okay. Middle name Pride Day. Oh. And number one, my middle name is Tiffany. I do have the best name I understand, Avalon Tiffany Cartier. But when I was growing up... As Christians, we're humble. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, when you're growing up, like in elementary school and stuff, I feel like so many people never... Like it's a secret, their middle name. I hate elementary school. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I loved, I loved college. I loved high school. A lot of people don't like high school. Senior year of college up until junior year. Some, wait, senior year of high school up until junior year of college. Best. As soon as, you know, like how everyone's like, oh, puberty is an awkward stage. Yeah. I didn't like that pre-puberty. That's when I felt like I got like ridiculed the most. And I was a cool kid. But maybe it's because I let it get to me. This is you all. You still get ridiculed by elementary school. That's what I'm saying. That like, I, I've grown up. But but those those kids, they just. What it is. We talked about in the podcast before. For a long time. I'm like, why do kids or young boys ages six to 11 point me out and say i'm gonna mess with that kid yeah 
And I was like, do they smell fear? Um, do, it's do like, they, it's they, literally instinctual for them, but it doesn't make sense. Do they sense weak? Yeah. It, I could be with 20 guys and then they'll pick me out and say, let's go kid. And I'm like, I'm, I'm an adult. I, <laughs> I am your uh, elder. I, my hands start sweating. And, um, knees weak, arms are So, yeah, so a long time I'm like, okay, they smell fear. Like, I, but I'm like, what came first, the chicken or the egg? Like, I was afraid of these kids after they were bullying me, not the other way around. Um, what I've come to the conclusion, and I, a little bit tooting my own horn here, but I think it's because, you know, auras. 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 Yes. Yeah. I think I give off a very welcoming, comfortable aura that they just want to destroy. <laughs> No. So what I mean is when like when I was younger and you see grown people, grown guys, big brawly guys, you're intimidated and like yeah. or like even like oh like you feel a, a, a disconnect of like I'm not going like gonna try anything. I think with me it's like they feel all like those age kids like to horseplay and, and, and yeah. insult each other and stuff. And they see me as not intimidating in the sense of even if I'm big and strong like I am. They don't see it as like they they're comfortable. They're comfortable enough to bully me, and that's my little sweet takeaway from that. <laughs> <laughs> that should be your bio. Little kids are comfortable enough yeah, to bully me. I love me. kids. They're comfortable enough to bully me. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I digress. Why did we middle name? Middle name. That is why I'm talking about getting bullied because this is all a bullying story. Promise we'll we'll, we'll stop talking <laughs> about bullying in a second. I have a very good normal name, biblical name, middle name Thomas. Solid. Doubt, doubting Thomas. Solid. It's my grandfather's name. It's a beautiful right, name. Okay. I, yeah. I wouldn't trade it for the world. But these kids, I must have been in third grade. I remember I was at the lunch table. And so my brothers were, it was by grades. My brothers were at another lunch table. And I they said, they were asking middle names. You know, they just like. Uh, it, was a, it was a topic of conversation was, for some reason. It was like, yeah. just like nobody knew it. And as soon as they yeah. found it out, it's like they got a little piece of your soul or something. But anyway. I'm in the lunch room, very just, you know, timid to myself kid. And this one kid, I, I still remember his name. And he, <laughs> you can't say it. <laughs> no, I can't say it. You should say it and then bleep it. Uh, I can't say it because he's not around anymore. Nobody insults him. <laughs> and he stands up and he's like, hey, Tom ass. And that was the most hurtful thing that's ever happened to me. And I'm like. How did you turn the most normal name of Thomas into something that can hurt someone? I knew a Tomas. But I've grown since then. And as a Christian, I forgive you. Have you? Because I, you. If you're watching this, this story. for the first time, I forgive you. For the first time. You know not what you've done. I forgive I'm you. I'm proud of you. I forgive you. I'm proud. Of because you. It's, it's. You know, did you, I just realized right this second that we both have the same middle initial and the same last initial. So. It is a special day because it is Friday. That's why we're having fun. We have hats that I don't know are going to... I feel like that has definitely shifted since the beginning yeah. of the podcast. That's okay. We have a new co-host, but there is one thing that stays the same on Friday, and that is the fact that it is Dr. Dr. Seuss, Seuss Friday. Friday. Heck yeah. Your first Dr. Seuss Friday, yeah. but I assume you've watched everyone. Uh-huh. What do we do on Dr. Seuss Friday? You're have like, you guys done... Green eggs and ham yet? We have. We have. I knew that. I was checking you. We have a new one. Well, actually, we don't. But, um, oh. Well, it's kind of a little in between new okay. and old. So, what do we do on Dr. Seuss Friday? You're probably like, oh, like Spencer, are you that stunted from the insults you've had as a childhood that you want to read children's books? Wow. No. Maybe. No. <laughs> it, it, Dr. Seuss, amazing guy, wasn't actually a doctor, amazing guy. Um, Wrote kids' books. Yes, he did. And you read them to your kids, and their little brains absorb it. Uh-huh. Now we are going back, and we're reading them with our big brains. Because inside brain. those simple stories are concepts that we find are really uh, really meaningful, impactful. And in some essences, we can translate it into our spirituality. You know? Uh, love to see it. Why, did, why does Jesus love children so much? Because obviously they, ne they never called his name. Wait, also slight sidetrack because you said Jesus loves little kids. Babies have perfect like posture and stuff and we should be more like babies. Put it in a picture and when they squat and look at their backs, they're like this. And they only have the two fears, what? Falling and loud noises. And the FBI. Um. So All the birds were Jesus loves kids and more than that, he tells us adults to be like children. 
Why is that? Because you're receptive. You're open. You're malleable like clay. And you can take these small stories and let them mean something for you. And when we get older, we get hard as rocks. And don't tell me something I don't want to know. Yeah. And so we're going back and, and we're using our adult brains, our childlike souls, and we're going to get a deep meaning out of Dr. Seuss. And that is Dr. Seuss Friday. Let's do it. So if you guys watched last week, we got this new book that's called Horton and the Quagger Bug and More Lost Stories. Now, you probably don't know about this because you don't watch our podcast. But Dr. Seuss wrote so much. I the fifth. Not all of it was published books. Some were for magazines. Once a magazine's thrown out, gone is a story. This guy went and looked for all of the lost stories. Oh. And so there's four of them. It's in like when they released the Pop Smoke album after he died. Yeah? No. Oh. No. It's more like Juice World when he had some, or no, or like XXX Tentacion. Or it happened with Mac Miller, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's like where it was already out and they like brought it out again. Only oh. a few people heard it. Because people did read these in the magazines. Okay, okay, But it wasn't okay. for kids on the shelves. It wasn't like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm last following. time we read Horton and the Quagger Bug, which was great. And so today we will be reading Marco Comes Late. Marco? Marco? Polo. There it is. All right. Oh, you missed a good one last week. Horton. Horton didn't hear who in that book. I'll tell I you that gonna much. I was going to say. I love that movie. Are you a good reader? Would you like to read? Do you want me to read? I'm asking. Well, I, like. I always read, but. Uh, if you want to mix it up, I'm fine reading. But like, if you were prepared, I don't mind. Either way. No, why don't you? Maybe they'll want to hear a, a girl speaking okay. for once. I'll have to remember to listen because I'm like so used to just reading it and yeah. getting it. Okay. I'll, I'll listen. I promise. Okay. Do you show the pictures or do you put them up? I'll put them up in editing. So you just read it yourself. You know in like kindergarten? I, I do. But you can just read it yourself. Okay. Marco comes late. Young man, said Miss Block. It's 11 o'clock. Do you like voices? You can you can do your own okay, art, yeah. artistic interpretation. but um. Sure. I might not be able to like keep up. No, that's fine. Oh, okay, now I'll put, I'll put the cube down. I'll listen. You, it's okay to have a fidget spinner. This school begins promptly at 845. Why, this is a terrible time to arrive. What's wrong with you, boy? Is your head made of wood? Why didn't you come just as fast as you could? What is your excuse? It had better be good. Marco looked at the clock. Then he looked at Miss Block. Excuse? Marco stuttered. Er. Well, well, you see, er, well, it's like this. Something happened to me. This morning, Miss Block, when I left home for school, I hurried off early, according to rule. I said when I started at quarter past eight, I must not, I will not, I shall not be late. I'll be the first pupil to be in my seat, then bang, something happened on Mulberry Street. I heard a strange peep, and... I took a quick look, and you know what I saw with the look that I took? A bird laid an egg on my arithmetic book. Bird left. <laughs> I couldn't believe it, Miss Block, but it's true. I stopped, and I didn't quite know what to do. I didn't dare run, and I didn't dare walk. I didn't dare yell, and I didn't dare talk. I didn't dare sneeze, and I didn't dare cough. Because if I did, I would knock the egg off. So I stood there stock still, and it worried me pink. Then my feet got quite tired, and I sat down to think. And while I was thinking down there on the ground, I saw something move, and I heard a loud sound of a worm who was having a fight with his wife, the most terrible fight that I've heard in my life. Domestic abuse. <laughs> the worm, he was yelling, That boy should not wait! He must not, he dare not, he shall not be late! That boy ought to smash that egg off his head! Then the wife of the worm shouted back, and she said, to break that dear egg would be terribly cruel, and eggs more important than going to school. That egg isn't that mother's bird's pride and her joy. If he smashes that egg, he's the world's meanest boy. And while the worms argued about what I should do, a couple big cats started arguing too. <laughs> you listen to me, I heard one of them say. If this boy doesn't go to school right away, Miss Block will be frightfully, horribly mad. If the boy gets there late, she will punish the lad. Then the other cat snapped. 
If I don't dare, if I don't care if he does, this boy must not move. So I stayed where I was with the egg on my head and my heart full of fears and the shouting of cats and of worms in my ears. Then, while I lay wondering when all this would stop, the egg on the book burst apart with a pop. And out of the pieces of red and white shell jumped a strange brand new bird. And he said with a yell, I thank you, young fellow. You've been simply great. But now that I've hatched, you no longer need to wait. I'm sorry I kept you till 11 o'clock. It's really my fault. You tell that, Miss Block. I wish you good luck and I bid you good day. That's what the bird said. Then he fluttered away. And then I got here just as fast as I could. That's my excuse, and I think it's quite good. Miss Block didn't speak for a moment or two. Her eyes looked at Marco and looked him clean through. Then she smiled. That's a very good tale, if it's true. Did all of those things really happen to you? Er, well, answered Marco, with sort of a squirm. Not quite all, I guess. But I did see a worm. <laughs> That's all. Oh, man. That is awesome. I liked that. I did. That was that was a fun book. It was. It was fun. Um thoughts, comments, concerns. So it's 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 about honesty. Um obviously. Yeah. It's about lying and Well, are we looking at the story or his story? Cuz they're two different. His story is my favorite subject. Um, well, tell me, what, 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 do you, what do you mean? <laughs> he said his story, which is history. <laughs> that was funny. So what are you saying? So because um, if you look at the story, there was a conflict between the worms and the big cats of whether he should leave the egg on his head. So it's like, you know how sometimes people are like, you shouldn't do that. It doesn't matter. And it's like, uh, oh, I oh, see but what it's you're nice. Saying. You're saying, let's for a second say the story was true. Yeah. What does it mean then? Yeah. Mm. So it's like, you know, he went with his gut of being like, I want to help someone. I Because if, if, remember, he was like, if he smashed the egg. Yeah. Then the little birdie would be dead. There was a national holiday, which all, which was very weird to us at the time. I, um, I forget which day it was on, but it was National Inconvenience Yourself Day. Oh. And what we learned later on, which made a lot more sense, because- it was saying, go out of your way, inconvenience, inconvenience yourself for someone else. Yeah. And we're like, why isn't it just like National like Help Day, National Be Kind Day, like, we're, we're National Inconvenience? But in that, in his story, that would be the definition of inconvenience. Like, you're now late for school. Yeah. It's like, it's I might get your, in trouble, but I... It's not your I, problem. Yeah. Egg, but he's not, like, and that's, I guess, what the National Inconvenience Day is. He's inconveniencing himself to help another. And yeah, I mean... If we're just first going to just go by his story, his story, um, you do see that a lot where when you are doing something which you think morally is sound and if you're going out of your way to do it, you always get multiple people telling you what to do. If you give money to an unhoused person, you'll have one person saying, that's yeah. very kind of you, you'll have another person saying, you're just feeding their addiction. Or, or, or And a wise woman who might be the co-host of this podcast once told me... Um, you should never feel bad about being nice. Yeah. Because you know how sometimes it doesn't work out in your favor. And like the person might be right. You know, like, so like, you know how you're saying different times when people are like, it's not worth it or something. Yeah. And it even if it went awry afterwards, you should never feel bad about doing something yeah. that was kind. Yeah. Yeah. You you can only hold yourself accountable for your actions. Yeah. You, you're not, you're not the puppet master. You're not God. You know, it's like you can go through life and be kind and, and be loving and it's it's not up to any people to say oh well you know actually it's a butterfly yeah. effect it's like well i i in that moment i did what i thought was right yeah and, and that's what's having, most important it's about having a, a moral a moral compass that w does not waver because you will always get two sides to everything because that's the thing yeah he had even there was two against and two for it yeah. you know and then he ended up choosing well in the in his which also, like you said, then you could go for the whole story, which is... And that's what we're going to transition yes. to now. It's the whole story, obviously, since we're talking about good and, and what's... He chose what was right in his story, but in, by doing so, he was telling a fib to the old teacher. And um, it comes down to honesty. Yeah. But it, was he wrong because he ended up being honest? No. 
he did come clean and and i think that is also part of, of this it's like he he like lied and, and i think part of a part of it was he was not honest with himself like he didn't he he told a story that was fabricated and it's like and he, he could have gotten because he said but i did see a worm and what if he got distracted what if he has add or something and it's like you know he 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 didn't realize how much time was passing so <laughs> yeah and then the not te- that it's right to lie and well but... the teacher saw that they were like yeah what a creative story it, it wasn't just I, I think all around we like marco he's uh he's a little bit of a, a silly boy he's a silly boy look at this picture of him yeah he's <laughs> the, the raggedy hair but um yeah walking away from it you know you get two stories in one with that you get a story yeah. within a story and um and it was i wasn't prepared for the plot twist oh uh, i was I, I knew the entire time it was a lie that's because I'm a lot more pessimistic than you, I guess. But, I was like, I was like, this is great. No. I was really excited to know what was going to happen with the it, bird. It, it is Dr. Seuss. So like all those characters are not out of the ordinary. Yeah. But um, yeah, overall, you know, beyond it's, it's all, honesty is always good. The best and policy. I think what I'm going to end my thought is saying is what is better than not being late for class with like, getting in trouble? is like with honesty is the clear conscience like yeah. I, I think that's why he switched at the end it's like he got away with it and then he was like for himself like we try you know so much to not burden ourselves you know as, as christians is like anything that's weighing down on us we try to like let not be stressed you know like let like give it to god and, and part of that of that honesty part of that honesty is not holding on to that guilt yeah like, N- and you're, that's the you're thing, right is, I, I i i didn't do it lies always come to light folks so lies always come to light like just just don't do it don't do it unless you have to but yeah. that's well, a story two stories in one uh two and one. another different co-host Bogo. it's been it's been a pretty wacky friday i hope you enjoyed it uh, i got someone else reading for once but go out um high five your local mortician and hand sanitize after it's still a pandemic and prayers for other co-host because like yes. i said everything is fine but it's always stressful to even be in a waiting room so and like you said you can pray for everyone you can pray for hey pray for everyone pray for frank it's uh it's saint patty's day weekend so pray for his liver all right guys we'll <laughs> be back fun. next week peace love and prosperity dr seuss avon out spencer out frank out peace <laughs> Rap, rap, rap.